understanding how to use a mask in photo editing is so important because in many softwares, whether for PC, Mac, or even for mobile, you're going to find so many times when masks are used. And this is just a simple explanation of how to use masks. I'm going to be using Photoscape X as the editor today. But there are so many other tools like Photoshop or Affinity that also use masks as well. And we're going to touch on this today because of one of my YouTube subscribers. They sent me a comment and let me know that they are kind of hesitant to use masks because they don't know exactly how they all work. So I'm going to show you how to use masks today. The way that I'm going to do this is simply going over here to the color tab and going and clicking mask. And then I have my mask tool to begin masking out a certain portion selection of the image and then we were going to make some edits and changes with it in most softwares uh, that include masks you'll be able to select exactly what you want and what you don't want so right over here at the uh, right side of your screen we have over here some different settings on here where i can change the brush size from being something that's very large to being something that is very small and then you can also go and change the hardness where if you have it set pretty light, you could, uh, let me just clear all that. You can just go across and it won't necessarily be a 100% selection. It can just be kind of tapered off on the edges or you can make it super hard and it just completely goes and you're just cutting everything out that goes in that selection. So this is helpful because let's say you go and you make a selection. Let's say it's the water here and I'm not going to be doing this super carefully. Usually you would zoom in real close and you would make sure to select exactly what you want and not what and the things that you don't want. And even if you do it quick, as far as the selecting side of it, what's neat is that you can go back in later and use the subtract tool we have the add tool and then we also have the subtract tool where i could zoom in and it's also very helpful to hit this show mask button usually you'll be able to hit this so you can see what you've selected already and what you haven't this is great because what you can do is you can start to subtract the different parts that you don't want to have selected and once again by putting that hardness to maybe it's a 50 or a 25 or something like that, it makes it easier. So you're not just either selecting so much of a part or not very much of a part. Instead, you can make it kind of a gradual transition from your selection to what you're not selecting. Of course, it depends on what kind of project you're working on and things like that. So with that being said, um, you go and you make those selections, you, uh, go and select just exactly what you want in your image. And remember, when you're masking something, it's because you're wanting to make a change or to address a certain thing in that part of the photo. It doesn't mean that you want to ma massively adjust it, massively change so much with it. Like in a lot of cases, you're just trying to boost a certain color or a certain look or a certain style in that part of the image. It's not trying to completely destroy the image. Uh, or make any massive changes. Also, re always remember, you can undo things. You don't have to keep all the changes you make. You can always tone it back and go back from the beginning and kind of start over. But just being able to play around and mess around with it is so helpful. Uh, this is just a photo of uh, my hometown or where I live now, not necessarily my hometown, but uh, definitely feels like home to me. Uh, nonetheless, What's great is that I'm able to uh, just select this and this river is definitely a lot more brown than I would like it to be. Um, it doesn't have as much blue in the water. So that's why I'll hit show mask here. I can have just the water selected here and I could have taken more time to make sure I get this edge a bit better and things like that. But you get what you want selected and then Oftentimes, maybe it's doing a color change, maybe it's doing a certain type of adjustment. In this case, in Photoscape X, I'm just looking at it with the color tab, meaning that I can change the brightness, the darkness, the HDR, uh, the saturation contrast, those different things. And there's a few more where I could change the hue, the color balance, and things like that. But you don't have to get overwhelmed. 
Sometimes it's simply saying, hey, that part of the photo is a bit too dark. I want to select that part and to boost those colors there. And this can just be helpful to be able to see those changes. So what I'm going to do, it'll be the simplest way to do it, grabbing the brightness slider. So I have that part of the image selected. I'm going to drag that brightness slider up and it should brighten up the water. So turning it up. And sure enough, that water is now a lot brighter. So we can go back to uh, just the compare button. Here's what it was before, and here's what it is after. It's definitely a lot because I cranked it up all the way to show a drastic change. But if you were just trying to brighten it maybe a little bit, that might be something that makes a little more sense. Or sometimes if you're looking to increase the saturation. So there you got your greens a whole lot more on the edges and your blues also are a lot more vibrant. But remember, that's just changing that part of the photo. It hasn't touched the trees, it hasn't touched the sky, or anything like that. Now, there are times where maybe you want to get more of that blue. That's where, if I go down to this more section, there's actually a place where I can boost the blues, or I can boost magenta, or I can boost the cayenne or red, or different things. So I could boost the blue here. Wow, uh, that's, a, that's a whole lot too much, uh, for sure. Maybe just a little adjustment. Uh, not really what I'm looking for. And sometimes it's fine the certain adjustments or sliders that you're looking for to make that work. Maybe it's the cayenne. Eh, not exactly. It's making such a huge adjustment to what I'm doing that it almost becomes too much. Mm. Yeah, that's a little tough for sure. Sometimes what can be helpful is if you are... Um, not using just like the color tab. Sometimes it's using some of the other adjustment tools. Um, now, if I were to hop out here to the edit, do I lose my selection? It actually might. Uh, all software is different, but masks is just a universal concept that is in most photo editing software. So like if I go down here to the color fill tool, let's see, color fill. I can go over here to mask. I could select just those portions and I can just do this real quick for you guys. Select this and this is using an overlay not so much of a changing of the pixels or the colors individually it's doing an overlay and that is one where I can go and select the certain color so I can kind of find that color in there and maybe I can get that desired color that I'm looking for a bit more. And then, of course, you can change that overlay to like something like a lighten or to a hard light overlay, different things like that. And you can change the opacity as well. Uh, nonetheless, there's a lot of things you can change and adjust with the mask tool. Uh, so like if I were to go back into the mask, I can select the sky here and I can make that change, that adjustment just the way that I would like. This also goes into another question that was asked by a uh, individual who was commenting on one of my videos saying, hey, how do I change the sky in one of my photos without like completely cutting the sky out and putting a totally different photo in the background there? It could just be masking that out. So you have that selected and then you can go and make some of those changes. Like let's say I want to brighten up the sky or maybe not brighten because that kind of blows it out maybe increasing the clarity or the HDR. Wow. Or trying to find some of those different color changes to maybe bring more of that blue back into the image. Maybe that saturation increasing. Trying to get that desired color like we were talking about before. Wow, that's, uh, that's a little too much. Um, One thing that's also nice is if you see, oh wow, it's uh, changing the color of the trees too much. You can see, oh, that must be a part of the mask and I can go back and I can subtract that and take it out of the image. And there you go, and then it's not affecting that because you've made that change, that adjustment in where your mask is. So 
I just wanted to hop in, share that with you guys, because so many times people will kind of be afraid of masks or how it all works and everything like that. But it's simply selecting a portion of the image and then going ahead and making a change, an adjustment, a shift. So, you know, you could say, hey, I want to sharpen my image, but oh, I actually just want to sharpen a certain portion of the image. You know, being able to do that can be super helpful if you want to say, wow, I just want to absolutely blow it out with detail and uh, sharpness on these trees and all the leaves and everything like that. But as far as the water and stuff, no, I want to have those nice calm ripples in the water, things like that. So you guys, I hope this video was helpful just to look at masks a bit more. It's neat to be able to see that there's a lot of different color uh, ways to color, make color adjustments, things like that. And to just say, oh yeah, I can start by having the entire image filled and then I'm subtracting from there. I'm able to start with it completely clear and just start adding from a starting that starting point. What is also interesting is let's say you have all of this selected and you want to say, hey, I want to, instead of selecting that portion of the image, I want to select the opposite. I want to select everything that I didn't select before. There is an invert mask where you can go from what you had selected to everything else selected. And that can be really helpful if you're making multiple changes and adjustments and shifts. Um, you can change brush shapes, things like that. But definitely check out the software that you're using. Let me know what you're using if you want me to make a specific video, whether it's Photoscape X, uh, Affinity, Photoshop, things like that. But you guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.